Sandra Polubiak, this is Maria Bogorodova, and Emily Intrasimoni, and we're really excited to share the application that we've built. This is Synth. Synth creates a space uh, for beginning and experienced musicians to create and share musical ideas. It allows you to rapidly prototype new musical sketches in order to promote inspiration for new compositions. Maria is going to get started by telling you how to make music with Synth. Thank you, Alex. So this is our loop editor in which we will create loops, uh, save them, and later come back uh, and edit them. All you have to do to start making loops is click on one of the cells. The x-axis represents beats with each cell being an eighth note, and the y-axis represents note pitches. So the higher the cell, the higher the note will be. The music will play from left to right, and the notes will light up as they're playing. Um, you can expand notes, move them around, and delete them simply by selecting the note and performing the desired action. We put the notes on our canvas and made them dynamic with Fabric.js. You can save all the loops that you create to your loop bucket. You can also browse the loops other members have created. You can copy those loops and you can edit them in any way you desire. You can save them to your loop bucket and then use them to make compositions. And now Emily will show you how to do just that. Here in our mix editor, you will have access to all of the loops that you saved in your loop bucket at the top of the page. And to get started, all you have to do is click and drag a loop into an empty measure in a track, and then we'll copy the loop's uh, musical data into our musical timeline. So when you press play, you will see and hear the notes played back exactly where you played them. You can also make new tracks. Each of those tracks can have their own sets of loops and they can have their own instrument. And when you press play, you'll hear all tracks play back simultaneously. Once you've saved your mix, you can share it with friends, and they can listen to it, see what loops you've used and how, and be inspired to make their own mix. And now Alex is going to explain how Symph is making the sounds that you're hearing, as well as describe our process building the app. Thanks, Emily. So when we set out to create Symph, we wanted to make composition accessible and fun especially for people who are new to music. The entire project started from this one idea of being able to draw in order to create notes on the page. So uh, we explored a number of the tools that are already out there for creating music, but many of them seem to focus on either recorded audio or dealing with music files. We decided to take on the challenge of working with the Web Audio API in order to directly synthesize music in the browser. After exploring a number of tools and libraries, we decided to work with Tone.js because it allowed us to consider our music uh, as a timeline of notes and beats rather than dealing directly with oscillators or frequencies of pitches. One challenge that arose along the way was we had to make sure that we didn't introduce any latency into our musical timeline. This was especially a challenge when we started introducing animation into our visual interface. In order to handle this problem, we had to schedule our asynchronous animation events separately from our uh, musical timeline while still ensuring that the two events occurred simultaneously from the user's perspective. In the end, we were able to create a platform that we think lets people share ideas, collaborate, and inspire each other. And we hope you'll get started making music on Synth today. You can find us at getsynth.io. To close out our presentation, we have a piece that we threw together that we'd like to share with you. Thank <laughs> you.